having worked long and hard on my scrapbook history of Carnate Island, I wanted something a bit less depressing to take on next. I thought our state's largest city might be an interesting subject and spend a large portion of my time off the island delving into the history of Baltimore. I cherished my time away from Carnate but I soon found that Charm City had its own share of dark events from the past. And now I wonder, is it me? Do I seek out these horrible tragedies when I investigate the history of a place? Has Carnate changed me to be fixated on death and horrible suffering? Or is the evil everywhere, if you look hard enough? Baltimore Harbor. Baltimore owes its existence to its geography. It was a major port for the clipper ships of the 18th century and to this day is a major shipping center on the eastern seaboard. The shipping industry certainly has its seedy side, with criminals and corruptions infesting it in the past and still today. With numerous underused and abandoned facilities, if you ask a resident of Baltimore what exactly the city's docks are used for, likely they would not be able to tell you. Canal Street Mission one of Baltimore's most tragic stories takes place during the Great Depression. In the 1930s, there was a reverend who, when his soup kitchen ran bare, served up human corpses to his starving followers. This is tied to a persistent urban legend about a creature known as the Gorger. During the food shortages, mothers would tell their children that the Gorger had eaten all of their food, and if they did not behave, he might soon eat them as well. The tunnels. As with any major city of a certain age, beneath Baltimore there are more tunnels than any one person can remember. The working conditions endured while these passages were built were unsafe and often deadly. But immigrant labor, typically from Ireland, had no choice but to engage in these hazardous jobs if they wanted work. People say you can still hear their voices, trapped under the ground, desperately screaming out their last breaths. An old station. A slave state, Maryland sat on the border between the slave-holding South and the free North. Because of this, the state hosted numerous important stations on the Underground Railroad. It was at one of these safe havens in Baltimore that the slave hunter Copperfield revealed his true sadism. The tale says, Copperfield smiled as he let his rabid dogs loose on a number of bountyless runaways, directing the beast to devour the helpless slaves alive. Sight of a lynching. Even the most adept negotiator will agree, they may be able to calm the rage of any one individual, but the fury of an enraged mob is all but unstoppable. In Baltimore, some 80 years ago, it was on this corner that the rage of a horde of people could only end in bloodshed. Today, that event is shrouded in mystery. No one even remembers the supposed crime of the accused. It doesn't matter. The horde makes its own right and wrong. Eastern Baltimore Correctional Facility Though Abbott is a higher security prison containing a harder breed of inmate, Eastern Baltimore Correctional Facility has a legacy that makes it just as notorious. Located deep in the harshest section of East Baltimore, for 50 years the facility was run by a series of cruel wardens who directed a hateful staff. Recently, the brutal criminal Blackmore was said to have done a stint there. Finally, an inmate whose evil surpassed that of his jailers. Eastern Correctional Lunchroom The secret of every corrections officer is that he is totally powerless against the superior numbers of the inmates. On one fateful day in the 1970s, the inmates at Eastern overthrew their captors, even managing to kill the warden. They say his blood still stains the floor of the lunchroom. A brutal show of force followed, the CERT unit opening fire on the inmates. Many died, but the inmates had already reminded everyone who truly has the power. Eastern Correctional Solitary Confinement Unit It is hard to punish those who are already incarcerated. Prisons have focused on removing what few freedoms and privileges inmates retain. Light, fresh air, mobility, 
human contact. Solitary takes away all those things. In Eastern, the COs took it to the extreme, so far that seven inmates killed themselves rather than live another day in the dark misery of the solitary cells. The story goes that Warden Elroy smiled when he heard the news. Eastern Correctional Machine Shop The goal of Eastern's most notorious warden, Raymond Elroy, was to keep his inmates as miserable as possible, something accomplished largely through the hard labor forced on them in the machine shop. There was little regard for their safety, with disastrous results. For instance, one day, the valves on the smelters melted off and completely incinerated a number of inmates. The stench of burnt human flesh has never left that room. The Legend of the Creeper The police have no record of a man named Luther Stickwell, but the people of Baltimore remember him as the Creeper. The legends say he was a pimp whose hatred of women knew no limit, and he ended up killing not only the women in his employ, but also any others who suited his fancy his eventual body count ranging from 50 to over 200. Few things make me as ill as when I hear he still skulks through the alleyways of Baltimore. Carnate Island. The people of Baltimore and Greater Maryland almost never speak of Carnate Island, as if they wish it did not actually exist. Yet there it looms off the coast, its own dark history surpassing even Baltimore in sheer numbers of atrocities. Today, those of us who live there work in the bleak Abbott State Penitentiary, or are married to those who do. I can assure you, we never forget that it is an intensely deep shade of blood that stains the island soil. Blackmore's Drowning Pool it seems the entire city of Baltimore shakes at the mention of the name Blackmore. The notorious drug lord has taken over most of East Baltimore's drug trade, viciously disposing of his enemies in his infamous underground drowning pool. Perhaps the fact that hardly anyone has ever met him is part of his secret. He lives almost as a legend, only visible out of the corner of an eye, looming over the city like a specter of pure evil.